lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. What's up, family? It's me, Jerry Rose Live Worldwide from Positive Power Double XI. And you're listening to Elections Radio with Kimmy Kim. One, two. One, two. Let me show y'all how to have swag. Eternal style. Come on, follow me. Simply worship Almighty God. Simply worship Almighty God. Simply worship Almighty God. If you want to have swag, man, it ain't that hard. Just simply worship Almighty God. Simply worship Almighty God. Simply worship Almighty God. If you want to have swag, man, it ain't that hard. Just I just got to brag. See, I got the swag, make the devil get mad. Get mad, mad and it makes mad, me glad. Mad. Like a Scottish man dressing all plaid. I wear it loud, I wear it proud. You can see me walking around in a crowd. Cause I'm shining like a diamond. And when them storms come, man, I'm reclining. On his outstretched arm, leaning on the Lord. The fool's got guns, oh man, I got a sword. And it's a double edge, it cuts both ways. The one I fear no evil, my God is with me And he prepares the table before my enemy Now that's super swag, not for the faint of heart You can have it too, if you worship Almighty God Simply worship Almighty God Simply worship Almighty God Simply worship Almighty God If you wanna have swag, man, it ain't that hard Just simply worship Almighty God Simply worship Almighty God Simply worship Almighty God If you wanna have swag the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want He gives me so much swag, I can't help but flaunt And yeah, I brag, but it's in the Lord The mother gods are false, so what you bragging for? Some brag on cars, and they clothes But I brag on God, who can save my soul And he's in control of the whole universe So in my life, I put him first Above my wife, above my children On Christ, the solid rock I'm building And no the rain fall, and the flood came but still the house remains, and you can have the same. All you need is faith, and the mustard seed to win life's race. In first place, it ain't that hard, just simply worship Almighty God. Simply worship Almighty God. Simply worship Almighty God. Simply worship Almighty God. If you want to have swag, man, it ain't that hard, just simply worship Almighty God. Simply worship Almighty God. Simply worship Almighty God. God, if you want to have swag, man, it ain't that hard to swag. So now you know if you want to have swag, you don't have to hang with the thugs and act bad. You don't have to be a desperado. The devil is a liar that you don't have to follow. Let your motto be to serve the Lord, then your bravado will be like a lion when he roars. I said it once before, it ain't that hard. Just simply worship Almighty God. If you wanna have swag, man, it, man, it ain't hard. Just simply, simply, oh God, simply, simply, oh God, simply, simply, oh God. If you wanna have swag, man, it ain't hard. Power21.org, live and worldwide. My producer, Kimmy Kim Robinson, awesome producer, awesome lady, 
awesome Christian. Today's topic is overtime. Overtime. I've been working a lot of overtime at work, but then God got me to thinking how we need to work overtime for him. Before we do that, let's pray. Father, bless this show today. Bless all the people listening today. Bless everybody who will hear the recorded version, too. And bless the world today. Bless the United States, all our family and friends. Keep us safe from harm and, and all the people that are just losing their minds nowadays, going around killing people and The world that we live in, we know you know all too well what's going to happen, but we ask that you save us and keep us safe as your followers, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome. What's up? How you doing today? Thursday, another Thursday with God's Writer. Yes, I, oh, and I have a new book out. I have a brand new book out called Jesus Eternal Message and it's on Barnes and Noble website where you could go into the Barnes and Noble store and order it there. Get that. It's a big book. Six hundred and four pages and you'll love it. It's messages from Jesus that uh you're not gonna get anywhere else. Remember, I am God's writer. Not to brag about it, because I'm not bragging about it. That's just what God said you must do, so I do. So, I want to show, Kimmy, you ready? We're ready. Overtime. How do we serve the Lord and not work overtime? I mean, do we, we can't, there's no half step in with Jesus, you know, we can't just go halfway in. You got to go all the way in. If you're going to serve the Lord, you got to serve the Lord. You know, he said you can't have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. But I see people with both feet in the church, and they're really not serving the Lord. They're serving themselves. We need to stop with that attitude. We're there for Christ, not for self. And some people have tempted the devil to help them, lead them into an existence in church that doesn't serve the Lord, but it's self-serving. And it helps them feel like they're important. You know what I'm talking about, the hypocrites in the church. And there are many hypocrites in the church. There have always been hypocrites in the church. There were hypocrites in the church when Jesus was walking around among us. He could be walking around among us right now, but we wouldn't know it. But when we knew he was walking around among us, and when the priests, the people who should have been on his side the most, who were supposed to serve his father, who were supposed to be on the Lord's side, were turning against him because they were jealous. There's no room for jealousy when you're following Christ. There's no room for jealousy when you're following God. You Jealous of what? If you see other people doing stuff for God, you should rejoice. You should be happy. You should be amazed by how God is moving people in his direction and how God is using people to get the message out. But instead, we let our minds work overtime and hate on other people who are supposed to be our brothers and sisters in Christ. And that's not cool, and it's not right, and we need to stop it now. We're in the last day here. We don't know when things are going to end for us. We don't know when the rapture is going to come. We don't know when the Antichrist has been born. He might have been born already, but we don't know. Only God knows. Well, the devil would know that, but 
we have things going on right now, like North Korea. Now, the latest missile they shot off since they were doing nothing for two months. And then they shoot a missile off that they say can reach the United States. That's scary. We've never had an attack here except for 9-11. And you remember how horrifying that was. The prospect of another country taking aim at us has never been real before until now. I mean, yeah, Japan did it, you know, but now we're friends with Japan. It's funny how things turn around. But today, the threat today is very real. And with people on a daily basis running into churches and schools, killing children and people, we got to know that Time is being fulfilled, you know. Revelations is happening right in front of our faces. We're living in it anyways. And what we're doing, people are still ignoring the Lord. You should be running to Christ. You should, people should be running to Christ. They should be running on bending knees. They should be crawling to Christ. I mean, why would you just sit back and watch all this stuff go on you realize the end is is so near, and you don't know how near. But still, people don't, they don't even get it. Like, they don't appreciate what God has done for them. And they don't go to, to God and say, I know the end is near. I don't know when it is, but I need you, Lord, in my life because I don't want to die. I don't want to be gone forever. In, in the pits of hell But they don't do that No They're too busy Trying to make themselves big in their own eyes In their own life And the ones that do go to church You know every church Has them You know the devil shows up to church Every Sunday the devil shows up to church every time you're there Every time Anybody's there because he's not he's not coming to church to get his worship on. He's coming to church to mess with some folks and keep you from getting yours on. He wants you to talk about people. He wants you to act like you're better than people. He wants you to put people down. He wants you to he wants to distract you from understanding why you're really there to get the message that God is trying to give you on that day. And that's what he does. The devil is very tricky. He works overtime at getting you to do wrong, getting you to not understand how important Jesus is. He works overtime to get you to follow him. Because when you're not following Jesus the right way, when you're not following God, you're following Satan. You're following the world. And the world is led by Satan. God doesn't lead the world. God is in the world. He's not of the world. But God has control over the world. He can make anything happen he wants to. But he also allows the devil to do a lot of things because he gave us a choice. He gave us the reason why we should follow him, but he also gave us a choice. We can follow him or we cannot. It's up to us. Basically, you really do get yourself to heaven or hell because it's by your your own actions. It's by what you do. It's how you treat people. You know, it's all about do you love other people or do you hate other people? Are you jealous of other people or do you admire what they do? Do you care that this person is a life that Jesus made just like you? Or do you not care at all? 
No, it's all up to you. And we need to stop working overtime to serve the devil. And we need to start working overtime to serve the Lord. You know, there's nothing wrong with reading your Bible more than an hour a night. There's nothing wrong with hanging out at the church longer than the preacher's preaching. There's nothing wrong with praising the Lord while you're driving down the street or walking down the street and people think you're crazy. It looks like you're talking to yourself. There's nothing wrong with talking to God wherever you are at any time, at any moment. Because no matter what people think, God knows the truth. And no matter what people think, one day we're all going to leave this earth one way or another. And then you're going to look back and it's going to be like, was that so important that you had to look right to people to give up your inheritance in heaven? Now, people put too much importance on what other people think of them. You got to stop thinking about what people think of you and worry about what God thinks of you. Stop making yourself look good to people and start making yourself look good to God. There's no place that anybody on this earth can say that you. I can't send you to heaven. I can't send you to hell. Neither can Kimmy. Neither can your neighbor, your father, your mother, sister, your brother, the children. Nobody can send you anywhere except for Jesus Christ. And Jesus wants to bring you back home with him to heaven. He doesn't want to send you to hell. He didn't do all this so you could go to hell. He came and went through what he went through to get you back, back to where you belong, back to heaven, to his home, to your home, to our home, not to let you go into the fiery pits of eternal damnation, in a lake of sulfur so you can burn forever with the devil. That's not what he came for. He came to save you, came to bring you back to him. He worked overtime to come and do that. You know, a God that would come down here and become half man so he could save the people he made, that's incredible. That's that's some overtime work right there. Because he didn't have to do it. He did not have to do that. He did more than what he probably should have done. Probably more than what we deserve. More than God would have ever done. Of course, all fake gods are Satan anyways. Or they're nobody. But Jesus worked overtime for us. He walked around and healed people. He walked around and loved people. He showed people graciousness. He fed the homeless. He fed the the starving, the sick, healed the sick. You know, they had the same problems then that they have now. We haven't come very far. Technology and all those things have moved us along. But as people, it doesn't seem like we've changed a whole lot. We read about stories in the Bible, and they're true stories. They're not just made-up stories. These things actually happened. They really did happen. As incredible as some of them sound, because God can do that. He can do anything. But we have to realize, if people then were like people now, how far have we really come? Besides technology and modernization, I mean, we sweep the floor. It's not a dirt floor anymore. And, And in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament, they... 
weren't anywhere near as sophisticated as we are with anything. I mean, they have cell phones. They didn't have video games. They didn't have much of anything compared to what we have. We're so blessed. You know, we've come in a time when we have all these things to help us and and stimulate our everyday lives. I mean, they really work overtime for us. All the things we do now, it makes it so easy. So why is it so hard to follow Jesus? Why is it so hard to love other people? Why is it so hard to treat other people with respect? Because God made them just like he made us. Why is that so hard? It seems like we work overtime to hate other people. We work overtime to find something wrong someone else, but we miss what's wrong with ourselves. We need to look in the mirror. We need to look back at ourselves and see what do we have that falls short of the glory of God. What do we do that keeps us from knowing for a fact that we can get into heaven? We don't even know that. But then you've got some people who are so arrogant so self-serving. They think because I went to church and I got saved and I got baptized, I don't sin anymore. I commit no sins, even though you see me sinning every day. But I ain't sinning no more because Jesus said that. Jesus did not say you were not sinning anymore. He said, go forth and sin no more. He told us to not sin. He didn't say we wouldn't sin anymore. You're going to keep sinning as long as you're on this earth. You're going to keep sinning even though he called us saints. He didn't call us saints because we're saintly. He called us saints because one day we will be saints, which means we'll be perfect. But only that day, that's when we go to heaven. That's when we're in heaven because you've got to be perfect in heaven. You can't have any flaws in heaven. And we're not getting into heaven because we're already perfect or because we don't have any flaws. We're getting into heaven because of the goodness of the God, because he sees that we are worthy, even though we're really not. And he lets us in. But he doesn't have to. See, that's what we don't understand. He, we don't have to. God doesn't have to take us. He doesn't have to take any of us. If he wanted to, if he really were a mean God, like some people try to act like, he wouldn't take any of us back. Because we're all sinners. And I'm not just talking about, yeah, you were born into sin, so you're automatically a sinner when you came in to this world. No, we sin on a daily basis. We do other people wrong on a daily basis. Sometimes we're not even trying to do other people wrong, but we can't help ourselves because we're not able to not sin. We can't help ourselves from committing some kind of sin every day. And it could be the most subtle sin ever, but we still do it. Maybe we just looked at somebody wrong. A thought came in our head real quick. Or we said something wrong about somebody. We all sin. So for anybody to walk around and act like you're sin-free, you're only fooling yourself, nobody else. And you're doing it, you're working overtime to make yourself believe that you're all good to go. You're ready to go to heaven, but you're going to feel funny if you're standing in front of Jesus and he tells you to go somewhere else. Get out of my face. I don't want to see you. You know, that's not what we're trying to do. And when we come forth with God's messages, 
we're trying to bring you realization that we all have work to do, and we have to do it together. You know, it's kind of hard to walk through this world alone. You can't do it. And if you don't have any friends, if you don't have anybody there for you, you need Jesus more than ever because he's the only friend you got. And even when you do have a lot of friends, you still need Jesus to get you through every single day. He works overtime for us. He doesn't have clocks to punch in and out on. He doesn't have to be at work from this hour to that hour. Jesus never stops working. He never stops. And aren't we glad? Aren't we glad that he worked overtime for us? Because if he didn't, the devil would have his way with us. He would do whatever he wants, anytime he wants, and if nobody would stop him. Because we can't stop him. Can't stop can you stop the devil? I can't stop the devil. Nobody can stop the devil except for God. Only God, the devil. There's no man alive that can stop the devil. I don't care how strong you are, how smart you are, how wise you are, you can't do it. You can't stop Satan from doing whatever Satan wants to do. But God stops Satan on a daily basis, an hourly basis. Every second of the time, He's stopping the devil from doing something to somebody. Because who's in control? Satan might think he's in control, but it's God. God is in control. And as long as we know that God is in control, we're okay. Don't worry about what other people think. When you're doing the right thing, don't they, don't worry about them going overtime trying to get you when you're doing what God wants you to do. Not what you put in your head that you think God may want you to do that serves you and not other people. That's what you want to do. What God wants you to do doesn't always sound right. What God wants you to do sounds like it's going to make you look foolish to other people. What God wants you to do make you feel like You don't know if you want to do it or not because other people are going to say he's very strange and why did he do that and why would you, common sense makes, you know, why would you go out of your way for this person who ain't never done nothing for you because God told you to. If God told you to do something, you do it. And you'll be rewarded for it. And the ultimate reward is to get into heaven. If you don't get rewarded for what you just did, you will see it in the end. And if you're looking for a reward for what you just did, that may be your end. Because that's not why we do things. That's not why we're supposed to do things. But that's why a lot of people do do things in this earth because they want to be rewarded. But if you're being rewarded for doing what God told you in that way, then maybe you're doing it for the wrong reason. See, I write what God gives me to write. I don't do it for my own reward. I do it for the Lord. I do it for the Lord. Kimmy does what she does for the Lord. Because we love God like that. We love Jesus like that. We we want to serve him because we know he, whatever we have, people may laugh at us. That's all you got. You're on the radio. You have a show. That's all you got. We're not rich people here. We're godly people. We serve the Lord. If God chooses to bless us with monetary things, then that's what he does, and we appreciate it. If God blesses us with 
feeling the love from other people, the respect, then that's what we get. We love it, and we thank God for it. If we get blessed by just knowing that we're doing the right thing for our God, for our Lord and Savior, the one that brought us up out of the pits of hell to ascend to heaven with him, then that's good enough for us because we want to be in heaven one day. We want to serve the Lord in the right way so that he can say, well done. I am pleased. And that's all we're really looking for here because whatever we get in this life ain't going to last. We can't take it with us. And we know that. Some people don't know that. They should know that. They may even say it, but they don't really know that. In their minds, it's more important to look good here on earth for 100 years or so or less or more, usually less, then it is to look good in heaven for eternity. Hmm. I think about that. Like, that's kind of overtime. Eternity. Why would I want to look good for 100 years when I can be in a good spot, be in a good place, be with all the good people, be with the Lord forever and ever and ever? And it's overtime because it never stops, and there's no clocking out. It's just going to keep it going on and going on. But I would give all that up. Why would I give all that up? To look good now to people who don't care about me in the first place? Believe me, people around you, there are a lot of fake people around you. Not everybody around you is fake. Not everybody around you has it in for you. Not everybody around you is on the other side. Some people actually do care about you. Some people do actually like you. Some people may actually love you. Some people actually care about what happens to you. But let's be realistic. It's very few. It's very few. And in this day and age, a lot of family members don't even care about you. It's obvious when we see the news and people have killed somebody in their own family or they've hurt somebody in their own family. And it happens in every town, in every city, every state in this country and in the world. It happens all the time. But Jesus is always on our side, never lets us down, and he's always there. And he listens, and he answers when it's appropriate and when we need it, right on time, like the song says. Not when we want it, but right on time. And why do we think we could ask for anything better? You can't get better than Jesus. You can't get better than the God that made you. You can't get better than perfect. Jesus is perfect. Satan ain't perfect. If Satan were perfect, he would still be in heaven. He wouldn't be down here running around trying to cause trouble for all of us. But he's down here, and he can't get back into heaven because he's not perfect, and he messed up, and he ain't getting back in. So he's trying to mess us up so we can't get in. And you would go out and party and we go have a good time. Ain't nothing wrong with that. People have done that forever. Now, if you listen to the hypocrites in the church, they'll tell you how terrible you are, how wrong you are, and how you're going to hell. Because you partied on Friday night and then you came to church on Sunday. I say, what does one have to do with the other? It's not like Jesus told you to stop living. No, there are some things we know we should just not do. If we're grown people and we understand the Lord and what he expects of us, we know what we're doing. And if we're out there doing wrong, we know that. 
And if we keep doing it and then we come ask him to forgive us on Sunday, we know that. We know he doesn't have to forgive us. If we're taking advantage of the Lord, it's, we might be getting away with it now, but eventually it's going to catch up with us. Because when we stand in front of Jesus on the day of reckoning, he's going to deal with all these things. He's going to deal with all these issues. All this overtime we've been putting in to be bad or do wrong, to look good to other people and not Jesus, we're going to hear about that on that day. We're going to deal with that on that day. And we're going to be sent to one of two places because of all the things we've ever done or didn't do on that day. And it's not going to be an excuse. It's going to be good enough to change the Lord's mind about what he's going to do with us. We need to stop working overtime to do wrong and put in some overtime to do right, to do what God wants us to do. You know, he talks to us all the time. People don't listen. You know, you think it's intuition or a woman's intuition. It's not a woman's intuition. We can call it that if you want. It's the Lord. It's the Holy Spirit telling you, hey, you should probably do this. It would be better for you to do that. And you don't listen. But when you do listen, do you ever notice when you do listen to what you're hearing inside, things work out better? When you do listen to what God's trying to tell you, things work out more in your favor? Don't believe me. Just think about it in your own life. When you've listened to that little voice inside of your head and your heart, it's God. It's a big voice. It's not a little voice, but that's the way you get it. And it's, why did I avoid going that way today to work? I went a whole different way. Then I found out there was an accident. Some people got killed. And it could have been me, but I didn't. Because something told me to go the other way. Now, it wasn't something that told you to go the other way. It was God that told you to go the other way. We need to quit giving honor and respect to things that are not God when God did it. Oh, he got lucky. He ain't get lucky. You got blessed. God don't deal in luck. God deals in blessing. You know, people, they run out and gamble. And they think it's okay while they're gambling away their mortgage payment or their kids' diapers that they need to get because they think they're going to get more money. They convince themselves, or the devil's helped them convince themselves that if I take this last bit of money here and I go to the casino, I'm going to make a whole lot of money, and then I'll be able to buy all these things. And what do you do? You end up losing it, and you come back, and now you have to worry about how are you going to replace it? How are you going to get the diapers you needed for your child? How are you going to pay your mortgage? How are you going to do anything? So hypocrites say it's against God's rules to gamble. Have you ever read in the Bible one time, just one time, where Jesus said, do not gamble. Have you ever seen that? It's not in there. Okay, they talk about gambling in the Bible when they said they cast lots for Jesus' clothes after he died. And this is what they use as an example to say you're not supposed to gamble. It don't really wash because God also used gambling casting lots to decide who was going to go in and light the candle when John the Baptist's dad was the one chosen because when he cast lots, it came to him and he went into the temple 
to light the candles, and that's when Archangel Gabriel came to him and said, you will have a son, and you will name him John, and he will be a great leader, and he will be before the Lord. And don't tell anybody. And he ran out and tried to tell everybody he lost his voice. But then when John was born to Elizabeth, who is Mother Mary's sister? Yes, John the Baptist is Jesus' first cousin. And he came six months before Jesus. And he was the only man born with the Holy Spirit already in him. And he left, he jumped around in Elizabeth's stomach when Mary came to visit because he knew that God was over there. God's in her belly. He knew that because he was filled with the Holy Spirit already. But God used gambling, John's dad, to go in to the temple so that Gabriel could talk to him. And then there's another time when God used gambling in his favor when Judas killed himself and they needed another apostle. They said, well, for some reason we have to have 12. Eleven's not going to get it. So we need to choose between these two people. And it was Matthias and somebody else, I forgot his name. And he said, how are we going to pick? We're going to cast lots. Again, casting lots is gambling. And they cast lots, and God made it fall to to Matthias. And he became the other apostle that people don't talk about. We don't know a lot about him, except that God did make them choose him. Now, I didn't say all that to say it's okay to go gamble. I said all that to tell you that God did not tell you that it was against his commands to gamble. But at the same time, God gave you a brain to be wise and not be tempted to go spend all your money when you need it for something else because you think you're going to get lucky and win a bunch of money. Okay, God wants you to be wise with your money, invest it, put it in the bank, make more money, you know, things like that. Be smart about it. Don't spend it on frivolous things you don't need. I mean, come on. God gave us a brain to use, and he tries to help us and guide us with our own brain to say, hey, maybe you shouldn't do that, and we ignore it because Satan got a better offer for us. It's prettier. It's gold and it's shiny and it's we can relate to that. So that's what we follow. We work overtime to ignore God and follow what Satan wants us to do. So the whole gambling issue, the hypocrites in the church will say you're going to hell because you gamble. When I was a kid, they also said, and some churches still do this, you're going to hell for drinking a beer. You're going to hell for smoking a cigarette. You're going to hell for smoking marijuana. You're going to hell for a lot of things, shaking your hips. You can't dance. You can't do anything. You're supposed to be boring. You just walk around. And now they didn't say, don't do all this and just praise God all day. No, they're not trying to put themselves in a spot where they don't really want to be because they don't want to go around praising God all day. They want to think about themselves, and they want to put you down at the same time. All these things are not leading you to hell. It does not say in the Bible not to drink either. If you notice, in the Bible, people did drink. And Jesus' first miracle was to make the water into wine at a wedding. And he said he wasn't ready, and his mother told him, 
Go ahead and do it. So he did. He did. And then they say, yeah, but it wasn't fermented. The point. He's not going to drink anything that's going to make him drunk. He's God. He's going to mess with his own mind. He's not going to do that. But that's not the point. The point is, you're not going to hell because you drank a beer. You're not going to hell because you smoked a cigarette. You're not going to hell because you smoked a joint. You're not going to hell. That's right, I said that. You are not going to go to hell because you took some marijuana. You're not going to go to hell if you took LSD. You might die, though. And then, I don't know, maybe you will go to hell. The point is, God didn't say... People are giving God credit for stuff he didn't do. People are blaming God for things he didn't say. Jesus actually said to forget their poverty. That's what he said about drinking. And he said, don't be drunk when I come back in the rapture because you're going to miss it. Because he ain't taking no drunk people with him. He never said you cannot have a drink. He never said you cannot enjoy yourself to a point. It's common sense. He gave you common sense to use to know when enough is enough and when to stop and when not to do. And We have it all in us, and we ignore it. God gave us all these things to help us through life, but we work overtime to ignore what God gave us and to pick up what Jesus didn't leave, but what Satan left. What Satan left in the road for us. Like, here, I'll just throw you a little crumb, and you come and get it. And we'll work overtime to get that crumb, because Satan left it. And it's shiny, and it looks good, and it's a lot of money, and it's whatever. But it's not serving the Lord, and it's not helping his cause. But... We want it, so let's go get it. People need to stop trying to control other people's lives. We can't even control our own lives. How are you going to control somebody else's life and tell them what not to do and make up things that are not in the Bible? Say, oh, God said this and God said that. Where is it at? Show me in the Bible where it is. Show me where God said that. Show me where Jesus said whatever you're trying to say. Show it to me. Prove it to me. Let me see it. Let me read it for myself. And if you took something out of context, I'll know when I read it. That's not right. I thought you said it said this. Show it to me. Not just me. I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about anybody. If you're telling people that the Bible said something, then they better say it. Jesus said don't change anything in this Bible, in this book. This book of God's, do not change, do not add or take away from it. He wasn't just talking about erasing something out of it or adding some words, typing it in. He's also talking about when you talk about the book, don't add things that are not there. Don't take away things that are there. Tell somebody that God said this in the Bible when he didn't or twist his words around to benefit you even though that's not what he meant. And people do this all the time. Preachers do this all the time. Priests do this all the time. Pastors, elders, bishops, whatever, apostles, prophets, they do this all the time. They take the Bible. They twist the words around. They tell you something that it means, and it doesn't mean that because it serves them more than it serves you. And don't listen to that. Read the Bible for yourself. And read one you can understand. King James is an awesome Bible. But it doesn't do you any good if you don't understand what it's saying. It's hard to read sometimes. 
That's why they made other Bibles. They're saying the same thing. They're just saying it with different words that mean the same thing so you'll understand it. I want to understand it. Don't you want to understand what you're reading? You want to pick up a Bible that you can't read? If that's the case, let's get the Aramaic Bible. Let's get the the original Bible, the one that King James copied off of when he wrote the King James Version. Because he said the same thing, but he did it so we could read it and understand it. But now we speak a whole different language today than they did back then, and we don't even know proper English in America anyways. So we need a Bible we can understand. If you don't have a Bible that you can understand, you're not getting anything out of it. And what good is that? You might as well not have a Bible at all. But the hypocrites in the church, and I'm not trying to attack church. I'm attacking the hypocrites that go to church and try to act like they're all that, and you're nothing. First of all, if that's how you're acting, you're not serving the Lord because the Lord doesn't work like that. The Lord doesn't put other people down to make himself look good. He doesn't have to. He's the Lord. Okay, I got that. But we we do. We got to put other people down to make ourselves look good. That's what the hypocrites do. Don't be like that. And if you're one of those people, stop being like that. You worked overtime to get to that status. Now work overtime to get away from that and to serve the Lord for real. Serve God the way he wants you to. Edifies what he wrote, and it shows respect and honor for him and not for yourself. Get the glory for God. Don't get the glory for you. We're not supposed to be getting our own glory. We're supposed to be glorifying the Lord. Any glory you got coming, you'll get when you go to heaven. That's all the glory you need. You don't need to be glorified on earth. You don't need to be standing out on earth. You don't need to be the big man on campus. You don't have to be number one. If you get into heaven... It don't matter what number you are. You've been blessed. And that's all you really need. That's all this life is about. Getting back to heaven. That's simple. It's so easy to understand. But we complicate everything. We work overtime to make everything seem harder than it is. Yeah, this life is hard. It's it's ridiculous the things we have to go through. That's why you got to keep God on your side. you got to keep him close to you. And you can't keep him as close as you need if you're putting yourself first, if you're putting your own needs before his, if you're putting your own glory before his, if you're putting your own way of doing things before his, and you're condemning the people who follow him more than you do. You're condemning people who serve him more than you do. You're working overtime to destroy the people who are working overtime for the Lord. That's a hypocrite. Don't be that. And if you are that, stop being that. And start being the brother and sister in Christ that you're supposed to be. Because that ain't love, that ain't friendship, that ain't nice, and that ain't cool, and that ain't what God sent you here to be. So we need to be what God sent us to be. We need to do what God wants us to do. We need to love other people. and We need to share with other people the wisdom of Christ. We need to share with other people the respect that they deserve. We need everybody. Everybody needs love. Everybody needs 
attention. Everybody needs somebody to care about them. You know, and maybe you can't do something for somebody or not, but you can pray for everybody. And God hears prayers. He really does. He doesn't ignore anybody's prayer. He might not answer the prayers in the way you want them to because you have your own agenda. you got to get rid of your own agenda if you're dealing with the Lord. If you want him to do something, you got to take it any way he gives it to you. Because whatever way he gives it to you is going to be the right way. Whatever way he gives it to you is going to be the way you needed it to be. Whatever way he gives it to you is going to mean something. It's going to last, and it's going to be important. And it's going to help you out more than what you wanted, more than what you envisioned, and way more than what Satan has for you. Because whatever Satan's got for you, it might look good on the outside. But once you get the wrapper off, what is this? It's not what I paid for. It's not what I bought. Somebody put something weird in my, what is this? That's what you're going to be saying. And the devil's laughing the whole time because you didn't follow God. You didn't follow his advice, his wisdom, his knowledge. You didn't do what he already knew would benefit you. And you did what he knew would not because Satan made it look good. It's nice and shiny. It looks like gold. But it tarnishes. It's not real gold. But you know what? Heaven. We say heaven. The streets are paved with gold. Always shining. Always glistening. But it's real. It's not fake. It's not fake. And when you're a hypocrite, you're fake. Because you're all about yourself not what you profess to be. And people do see through you. People see through what you're doing and what you're saying. You're good to go that you can do whatever you want. And it's okay. But it's not. And believe me, Jesus is writing everything down because you got saved, right? You got baptized. Now your name's in the Holy Spirit. Is living in you. Your name is in the book. Your name wasn't in the book before. The book of life. Now it is. So now everything you do is written down. It's all down there. And one day when you're standing in front of the Lord, you're going to find out because he's going to read in the book. And he's got several books. So he has more than one book. He's going to open them up, and he's going to read everything you've done, good or bad. And there's going to be a reckoning, and he's going to say something like, you know, I don't know exactly, but he's going to talk about all the things you did or should have done, things you shouldn't have done, how many times you asked him to forgive you for the things you did do or didn't do. And there's going to be a count. And you're going to account for everything. And if you're a hypocrite, you're going to have a lot to account for. Because you think you're good to go, and you're not. And you think you don't sin anymore, but you're wrong. And you think you're going to get into heaven no matter what you do. We'll find out. Don't work overtime for Satan. Don't work overtime. Work overtime for God. Yeah, you want to work overtime for people in a good way, in a loving and caring way, in a sharing way like their family to you, although some people don't treat their family good. Work overtime for what God wants, not for what the devil wants, not for what you want. Give God everything. And don't, 
this came to my mind. There are people out there who expect God to pay their light bill. Yeah. I'm going to give all my money to the church. I'm working overtime. I'm giving all my money to the church, and God will provide. Wait up, people. God did not say do not pay your bills. God did not say I'm going to take care of all that if you just give me all your money. God ain't asked for all your money. God asked for 10%. 10%. That's not a lot. 10%. Some people can't give 10%, though. And I'm going to need the hypocrites in the church to stop condemning those people who can't give 10%. You give what you can. Like that lady, when she came in, she gave two pieces, and they, and they laughed at her. And Jesus said, no, she's given more than any of you because she gave all she had. Okay? And then criticize the other people. Stop asking people to do things you won't do or trying to tell them they're not right if they don't do something that you didn't do but you expect them to do. That's not love, and that's not right, and that's not the way of Christ. Pay your bills, though, because even Jesus said when he went and he took the money out of the mouth of the fish and he told the man, give Caesar what's Caesar's and give God what's God's because we have to live on this earth. We have to pay our taxes. We have to live on this earth. We have to pay what we are due to pay. We have a bill. We need to pay it. We can't be relying on God to just take care of it. He gave you a job to take care of it. So don't go throw it all away on the boat or at the gambling casino and they expect God to pay your mortgage. It ain't going to happen. He gave you a brain, common sense, and he gave you the means to make money, not to turn around to him and say, I don't have, I can't, I'm going to get thrown out, my kids. God helps you when you can't help yourself. Okay? Don't be relying on Jesus to help you when you could have helped yourself, when he helped you all along. And then you purposely went and blew that money. See, that's why you shouldn't gamble. Not because you're going to go to hell for it, but because it's common sense. You need this money, and you're always going to lose more than you win. That's how it works out. Those are the odds. That's what happens. People brag about, I won $1,000, but you lost 5000 before that. And you could have paid your tuition to go to school, but you don't have any money because you blew it all. Let's stop working overtime to do stupid things or things that don't benefit the Lord or the people around you or even yourself and use some common sense overtime to serve what God wants, and then we'll be blessed. We won't be lucky. We'll be blessed. And that's way better than luck. And I got to go. Because I'm looking at the clock on the wall, and it's time, but I feel it's really I'm, the message is there. And it's been said, so I'm just going to keep repeating myself if I keep going. But work overtime for God. Work overtime for love, overtime for friendship, for caring. Work overtime for people who matter to you in your life. Don't be fooled by Satan. Don't be fooled by people who don't care about you. Don't be fooled by people in the church that are hypocrites. You know, there are good people in the church. I'm not putting the church down. And it's good to go to church and fellowship with other Christians because when two or more are there gathered in his name. He's there. He said that. So it's good to go to church. It's a wonderful thing to go to church. Don't be fooled. Don't think I'm talking against the church because I'm definitely not. 
because God is going to marry the church, and we're going to be as one. But what I'm saying is there are people in the church who are not serving the Lord but serving the devil in themselves. Okay? You have to deal with these people all the time, but don't buy into what they're trying to say to you. Don't buy into them putting you down. Don't buy into acting like them. Be what God wants you to be. Okay? And don't let those people chase you away from this from the church. And if it's so bad as your church, there's another church around the corner. They're popping up all over the place. But there's got to be a church that's good and right just for you. And you'll find it. You'll find it. And if it's not, look around. You have friends that go to other churches. You'll find the right one. You might have to look a little while before you find the one that you really like. But wherever you go, remember, there's going to be hypocrites at every church. You can't get away from that. It's going to happen. But you don't have to hang out with those people. Be nice to them. God bless you. Walk away. Why stay in conversation when you know they don't care about you or they want to put you down or they try to say things on the sly? They're working overtime to chase you away into the arms of the devil. Don't let them. Work overtime to use common sense and serve the Lord and follow what he wants. And go to church. But read your Bible for yourself. Don't just wait for the pastor to read a couple lines out of the Bible and try to make sense of it. Read it yourself. The Holy Spirit will help you. Get a Bible you understand. If you got to get ten Bibles before you find the one that you can really relate to, do that. And then let God guide you through it. He'll help you. If you have questions, ask somebody who knows, who's knowledgeable on the Bible. But don't just listen to other people. People make up stuff all the time that's not in the Bible just because it serves their benefit. They lie about the Bible all the time. So don't just take their word for it. Read it yourself. It's amazing how many Christians don't know what's in the Bible. They haven't read it. You blow off the dust on it on Sunday and take it to church with you. The pastor says, open to these chapters, to these sentences, and he reads them, and you read them with him, and that's it. You didn't understand it. And then he tells you what it meant. And then you go home. And there's, I don't know how many words are in the Bible, there were 50 million words in the Bible, you read 20 of them and you're good to go, read the Bible. We ain't got nothing to do on Friday night or Saturday night and you don't go out and party and you don't go visit people. Sit on your couch, in your bed, whatever. Read the Bible. Open it and read it. Read a book in the Bible. You know, they're called books. What we would call chapters. They're a whole book. Open it and read it. Learn it. Understand it. God will help you understand it. If you don't, if you need more clarification, you know, you can look up on the Internet and find out what this means. There are Bible verses on the Internet. There are places on the Internet where you can go and it will tell you what this means from this Bible and that Bible or you know a preacher who can tell you what it means, be careful. Some preachers will tell you wrong. Follow God, though, and read your Bible. Learn it for yourself. And then when people come with those lies, you'll know that they're not true. You don't have to call them on it, but you know yourself they're not true, so I'm not listening to what this person said. Just smile and Have a good day and walk away. God bless you. 
And I'm going to say God bless all of you now, and let's pray and get back to work or whatever, all these people that's working overtime. Father, bless us this day. Bless us to get the message what you were trying to say today. I hope I did an adequate job of presenting what you gave me, Lord. But I realize that we do need to work overtime for you and not for ourselves and other people. And I pray that everybody that heard that takes heed to that and we do step forward and and do what you want us to do, Lord, not what man wants us to do and not what our flesh wants us to do. In Jesus' name, please take care of all of us. Amen. And before I go, my new book is out. You know, my book is not my book, okay? It's called Jesus' Eternal Message. Jesus' Eternal Message. And it's on Barnes & Noble. Go on the website. Y'all got internet. Go on the website to Barnes & Noble and get it. Pick up your copy. Today, it's an awesome book. It's 69,000 words. Yeah, it's the biggest book I've ever written. But it's full of love and respect and honor and just incredible things from the Lord that you really got to read. You really have to read this book. I'm I'm so excited about it. It's, you know, it's 16.99. That may sound sound like a lot to some people, but you blow twenty dollars on a Friday night going out to party when you could be getting words from the Lord. And don't let nobody fool you and say that God don't give us words today. He gives us words all the time. People go buy them. Joyce Myers books, Joe Osteen, T.D. Jakes. The list goes on and on. C.L. Lewis. And you can put my name in there with those. Larry Corkins. C-O-R K-I-N-S Please go do yourself a favor. Get this book and you will be, I'm telling you, you're going to be amazed. I'm not just saying it because I wrote it because I didn't really write it. Jesus wrote it through me just like he wrote the Bible through other men. They always ask, who wrote the Bible? God wrote the Bible. But he did it through man. Okay? And he does this book through me, God's writer. But look it up, Larry Corkins, Jesus' Eternal Message, only on Barnes & Noble. Okay? And if you've got a Barnes & Noble in your area, you can go into the bookstore and ask them for that book, and they will order it for you. They might even send it straight to your house. I don't know. But it was published by them, so they're going to have it not on the shelf right now, but they have it. They'll order it for you. You have it in no time. Or go on Barnes & Noble's website and order it. But you've got to get this book because God felt it's so important to send it. And you really need to read it. And his real message... Jesus' eternal message, you want to know what the real message is here? If I can sum it up in all word, in, in one word, love. Love. His message is love. And that's what this whole book is about. And that's what he told us before he we went back to heaven. He was like, we're supposed to love each other. It's all about love. And it starts with him, and it doesn't end. There's no ending to God's love. But there's an ending to this show, and I'm going to take it. Kimmy, it's been a pleasure. Another great show. An awesome job you do is is my biggest blessing on this show, is Kimmy Robinson just and, and spreaded God's love and message to everybody. Thank you. Until next Thursday when we're live and worldwide again. Yes, we are worldwide, you know. We are. We're live every Thursday at 1 o'clock. God bless everybody. Have a great day and a great weekend. Be safe. Stay prayed up. Be blessed.
Take me out, Kimmy. For your name, cause I need you right now, Lord. Mm, I'm calling your name, cause I need you, Lord. Right now, Lord. Well, sometimes I get tired, and sometimes I get weak. That's why I'm calling Call your, your name, cause I need you right now, Lord. Yeah, I'm calling your name, cause I need you right now, Lord. Yeah. I'm calling your name, Lord, cause I need you, Lord, right now, Lord. Well, sometimes I get tired, and sometimes I get weak. That's why I'm calling Call your, your name, yeah, cause I need you right now, Lord. Mm, I'm praying this prayer right now, cause I need you, Lord, right now, Lord. Yeah, I'm praying this prayer right now, cause I need you, Lord, right now. Well, sometimes I wake it hard, and sometimes I wake it up. That's why I'm calling your name. Yeah, cause I need you right now. Sing of this song right now, cause I need you, Lord. Right now, Lord, I'm singing this song right now, cause I need you, Lord. Cradle of your 